Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Scrap Mechanic, and we are once again in creative mode, this time underwater, with the goal of building ourselves a working submarine. Now, technically, a legitimate submarine right now in Scrap Mechanic, I don't think it's possible, because as far as I know, there's no way to control buoyancy on an actual creation. Whatever your creation is made out of is what it's gonna be made out of. So it's either gonna float or it's gonna sink. And unfortunately, there's no way to really expand an air pocket or anything like that to create buoyancy or uh, take away buoyancy. But I have a workaround that I think might be kind of interesting. And hopefully it'll be something that'll make it convincing enough when you're in the sub. Now, one potential workaround is you could use thrust to kind of like float and sink underwater if you create something that is perfectly like neutrally buoyant buoyant, but that's not the workaround that I'm really going for. Instead, what I'm going to do is actually create a floating base that's going to float on the surface, and then I'm going to attach the submarine to the base with pistons, and then as those pistons expand and contract, it's going to lift and lower the submarine to mimic floating and sinking. And then since there's no like propellers or anything like that, we're probably going to have to use thrusters for uh, propulsion. All right, so first things first, let's build ourselves the sub and then we can worry about attaching it to things. All right, so now I actually have to find out what material doesn't float, but also doesn't sink super fast. Well, I've just discovered something kind of unexpected. Here I have tier one, tier two, and tier three metal. And the interesting thing is tier one metal has, they all have the same weight. They have five weights, every single one of them. But metal block one has four buoyancy, metal block two has five buoyancy, and metal block three has six buoyancy. So metal block three, as you can see, sinks much slower than metal block one. I wasn't expecting that for some reason. Oh, look at carpet block. Carpet block is very slightly positively buoyant. I would like to find that equivalent for negative buoyancy. All right, after looking through all the blocks, I honestly think metal three is the most buoyant, negatively buoyant block. That makes sense? I, mean, I know what I mean. Do you know what I mean? It sinks, but it sinks the least out of all the ones that sink. So I guess we're doing a tier three metal sub for the most part and just hope that I can counteract the weight with uh, bubble blocks at the surface base. I'm good with the words. All right, so let's start with the front of our sub where our seat's gonna be. We want to have a lot, a good field of view. So we're actually going to do that. Oh, this is gonna be interesting. Um, Cause I was gonna use glass, but the glass block is actually buoyant. So this means that the front of my sub is probably gonna be more buoyant than the rest of my sub, but that shouldn't matter too much. This isn't gonna be the best looking sub, by the way. I'm just warning you guys right now, if you're look, if you're expecting a really impressive aesthetic build, I'm I'm really focusing on the function here. This is a con this is a conceptual design. Really not going to be focusing super hard on the aesthetics too much. I just want it to be passable aesthetically and maybe just look good enough for a thumbnail, you know? YouTube things. All right, how's that look in first person? Oh boy, it's right in our face. I forgot that our character takes up more space than the seat actually does. So we are just literally in the glass. So we're gonna have to extend that up a little bit. How's that, is that better? Ah, yes, that's better. Oh boy, this is awkward looking. All right, so I think I'm gonna have to use suspension glitch steering for this. All right, there we go. We already got some working suspension glitch steering in there. All right, now we just gotta build out the rest of the submarine and hook up a bunch of other stuff. All right, I think this thing's actually starting to come together pretty well. I hope that the steering is strong enough to handle all this weight. Here, let's give it like a fancy and useless tail because that's how it goes when you don't actually get all of the physics that you need to make something legitimate. So you just put the fake things to make it look more legitimate. This tail doesn't even make any sense even if we did have the right physics. It's just there to make it look more like a fish, I guess. All right, let's go ahead and just put this thing in the water and see how it feels without actual uh, control. I mean, I should have some control at least. I should be able to go forward. Okay, I should be able to turn. And I also put reverse in here. They're not nearly strong enough though. Here, let's boost these thrusters up to max. Max power shouldn't be an issue, right? I mean, when in doubt, max power, right? All right, forward. There we go. Look at that. We're a sub already. I don't have any control other than forward, back, and yaw. And somehow this already looks legit. <laughs> the buoyancy is actually kind of amazing. But yeah, the windshield you can tell is making us pitch up for sure. But um, obviously we don't have all the control that we need just yet. But that's what my next idea is going to be for. 
I am really surprised at how well this looks so far. Okay, now for the most buoyant block in the game, the bubble plastic block. At least as far as I know. This technically has more buoyancy in the buoyancy rating, the wood block three. However, it's double the weight of the bubble plastic block. And I think that uh, makes the buoyancy to weight ratio better when it comes to bubble plastic. All right, so I don't think I need that much to actually make this work, but I'm gonna make this circular. Uh, let's go ahead and just make this 15. All right, there we go. That should be super buoyant, but even to just be overkill here, which may or may not be overkill, I'm just gonna duplicate this and then just weld a copy on. So now it's twice as thick. All right, so now to build the mechanism that attaches uh, the thing to the thing. So we're gonna have that thing attached to this thing and it's gonna do things to make it be a sub thing. I put, the, I put the logic system on here to make this do that uh, piss and arm thing where you can press one button to extend and one button to contract. So if I weld this, I hope this works. Please work. Please make this be all I have to do. If I put this right about that center. I think that's center. Right, right about there. I'm just kind of estimating. And now I need some electric engines to power these bearings. And I'm just gonna stick the electric engines. In. Oh, that's a bit. Oh, man. I didn't mean to do that. Well, I'll stick that in there. And then I guess I'll just put that right back there. All right, and now five and six are gonna go to these electric engines, which are gonna go to these bearings. Okay, I think I have it all hooked up successfully. So let's do a quick control test here. So uh, we should have, this is essentially gonna be my tilt. So that the thing on top is going to stay level with the surface. And because I'm hanging down below it, it should, I hope it should tilt my whole submarine. Um, and then when it comes to going up and down, I should, oh, I, I didn't hook up the buttons yet. Hold on. Oh, come back. All right. So that hooks into my seat and that hooks into my seat. All right. So what this allows me to do is I can press one button to extend down and one button to pull myself back up. All right, so here's a maiden voyage now. We're gonna see if this thing actually works as intended. I don't think I have all the controls I wanted in here just yet, but I really just wanna test this thing out first. All right, so good news. It floats just as planned. Now my, the issue I think is that um, when I use my thrust, I think it's gonna tilt me up because the mass above me is being factored in here. So here, let's go ahead and go forward. That's it. That's okay. I need to apparently increase my thrust. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. I put them, I put new thrusters on because they accidentally fell off when I put the electric engines in. That really concerned me for a second. I was like, why am I not moving? Turns out no thrust power. Okay, here we go. Let's try this again. Okay, yeah, that's kind of what I thought, but I have a plan for that. But let's just make sure everything else works. I should be able to turn. Oh yeah, turning works no problem. Okay, this is good so far. I can go backwards too. Now I should be able to tilt. Ooh, tilting? It does end up working. It has a weird effect though, because my the mass of my submarine is a lot more than the mass of that thing up there. So this does make sense. Hmm, if I made the thing on top heavier, it would avoid that issue somewhat. All right, so we have all that. We can go backwards as well. All right, now let's test the actual uh, dive and rise function. All right, so I should be able to go down. Like this? How far can I go down? Oh wait, where'd it go? Oh, that's interesting. I think I actually pushed that up above the water. Here, let me bring myself back up. Okay. I think I've also, yeah, I brought that down a considerable amount. I might need to expand the, uh, my flotation device. Cause look at what happens. I think that thing does need to be heavier or have more mass behind it. All right, let's go into first person. Let's see what first person feels like. All right, so I should be able to go forward. All right, yeah, I need to fix that. Oh, this looks so nice though, doesn't it? All right, let's go down. Eh. What's going on? Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to fix that. I want this to feel more natural. All right, I can pitch myself down. And go forward some more. Oh, this feels kind of nice though, doesn't it? Oh, let's go to follow camera. Strict follow camera, actually. We have a submarine, people. Almost. It's not perfect yet, but it's kind of working. All right, let's pull myself up. Let's go ahead and rise. See how this feels. The only thing about this submarine is you can't surface because you have to be below. 
your buoyancy base. All right, am I at the surface yet? I think I'm at the I'm at the surface that I can get. This is the surfaces I'm gonna be able to get. All right, let's navigate ourselves back to the land and fix these issues with controllability. All right, they're going to use some uh, carpet blocks because we found out that carpet blocks was slightly positively buoyant, but it weighs three times as much, or at least the weight rating is three times as much as um, the bubble block. So this should give me more mass without sacrificing buoyancy. And then another solution I have is I'm going to add thrust to the top and this thrust is going to help uh, prevent pitching when I'm going forward. Because right now, if I put forward thrust on the bottom, that essentially ends up pitching the entire sub upwards because it's kind of rotating around this point up here. But if I add thrust up here, then they'll kind of go in a line. I'm hoping. That's the plan, at least. All right, I think we're ready for testing. Let's hope that this feels a little bit more natural. All right. Well, uh, going forward definitely feels more natural. It's not pitching us up or down. Well, it's kind of pitching us down a little bit. Here, I'll just uh, weaken these by one. I hope this isn't too much. All right, how's that feel? That's okay. It is better. All right, now let's see how it feels to pitch. Okay, it's still, it still is a little bit weird. It's a little awkward. Now what about going up and down? See, that's better this time. It's not going so far out of the water and it's a more immediate reaction to going up and down. Because before, when I went down, it was kind of pushing that up more than it was pushing me down. So now, I kind of... I think I'm ready to do some sub submarine exploring. Here, let's go into first person, and now let's see what it feels like. Alright, so we go forward. Let's go into strict follow camera. We can go... The only thing is, I can only go down a maximum of 30 blocks because of the pistons. So if I want to go down into here... Um, I go ahead and go forward, and I'll press the down, and then here we go. We are sinking, and let's see how far- Ah, oh, that's as far as I can go. I could stack more pistons, but then I would be a lot lower below the surface by default, too. All right, we go ahead and pitch up. I might want to stack more pistons, actually. This is feeling nice, isn't it? All right, let's go ahead and- I'm raising myself now, increasing buoyancy, and I think- this is as close to the surface as I can get myself. It actually feels pretty close. What is that? Oh, I didn't mean to jump out there. Yeah, see, it's not that close to the surface, but it feels closer than it is, which is nice. Okay, let's pretend like we're exploring a reef. I'm going to increase my field of view or decrease my field of view. So I'm a little bit more immersed in this glass here. Oh, you know what I just realized? I don't need this seat. I'm using only buttons so I can get off. Oh. I can get rid of that entire seat and make the field of view so much easier. I'm going to do that. I'm going to reset all my buttons just for the sake of having an easier view here. All right, check this out. This is my view now. So let's try to go and explore this reef. We're going to go over like this. Oh, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to add a strafing option. <gasps> we have to do that because how much more, how much cooler would it be if I could strafe side to side? Because right now, in order to go to the right here, I have to go like this. And then I gotta go like, whoop, whoop, like this. And then I gotta turn this way. That's just not convenient at all. We need to add some strafing. All right, now I have all the controls I want, but it's not perfect as far as weight distribution goes, but I had limited options as far as fitting these bulky thrusters in there. So now if I try to zoom in here, you can see I got a thruster facing one direction. I go a little bit forward and then this thruster <laughs> is facing in the other direction. So when I wanna go left, I can press this, and you can see I strafe a little bit to the left. And I also got one up here so that I kind of stay level. And then when I go on the, when I go to the right, same thing here. I can strafe right, as well as that thruster up there. So now, at least when I'm coming into first person view, um, here, let me push myself down a little bit, go into strict follow cam. So now I can go forward. There we go. I can turn. Let, now let's use this strafing. Whoa! Okay, turning is a little bit extreme. Oh boy. Maybe I should lower those angles. But now if I go up to this reef here and raise myself up a little bit, and now if I want to get a nice close look here, but then I want to be like, okay, let's go off to the side a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, this isn't bad at all. Look at this. I am an exploration sub. I am a marine biologist. 
Except for the fact that I'm attached to the surface so I couldn't go through this tunnel if I really wanted to. And this is also as deep as I can go, apparently? Is that really? Oh! That's not how that's supposed to work. <laughs> this design has some limitations. All right here, let's watch it being controlled from the outside now. There we go. This is an interesting view, isn't it? All right, we'll raise ourselves up a little bit. Yeah, so this is what it looks like. This is our fake submarine. <laughs> that's all I've, I've just made a fake submarine. I just wanted some underwater exploration, but this is what I have to deal with. But I haven't actually explored the underwater of the creative map that much. It seems like there's a couple of like small little tunnels and stuff, but I don't think there are any big caves like we have in survival, at least based off of what I'm seeing here. Part of me wants to add more pistons so I can go deeper. If I can't make this thing perfect in other ways, I'm gonna at least improve it in the ways that I can. I want a deep sea exploration sub, all right? All right, here we go. Can we reach the bottom? Please just don't let this be worse of a vehicle than I already had. All right, and we're going down. How far down can we go? Oh. That's not good. Well, the good news is uh, I can reach the bottom once I let it settle down. So it's definitely more of like a submarine now. Look at this. This isn't bad. Oh, man. It affects things so much differently, though. Now it's like, it's tilting forward when I go forward instead of the other way around. All right, I feel like I may have made it just a little bit worse, but let's go into first person and navigate the ocean and see how it feels now. Deep sea exploration. We're marine biologists again. All right, let's examine this mushroom over here. New species of mushroom. So we go over, we gotta put ourselves down a little bit. Yeah, see, not a problem, All right? We're pretty much on the ocean floor now. Look at this. We can look down at the ocean floor. Bring ourselves back up a little bit. Yeah. And we can strafe around the mushroom. Go down and examine the stem. Up close and personal. Look at this. This isn't so bad. Alright, I'm assuming everything above me is just perfectly fine and nothing's wrong up there. I'm just gonna go about my business. <laughs> You know what, can I go through a tunnel? Because the pistons don't have collisions, but the blocks do. I have a feeling this is a bad idea, but I really just want to try it and see what happens. Open for the bet. oh, no, that, yep, that, it turned out to be, now, yeah, that's, there's no way those are gonna get through. Let's take a look at some of this stuff right here. These interesting rocks. I wish there was more underwater life. You know what? I have a solution for that. All right, look at this. This should be more exciting now. We actually have some underwater sea life. Underwater sea life. Is there sea life that isn't underwater? Now we can actually go and have a reason to explore the bottom of the ocean here. Look at this little fella. Look at this little fella. And get up nice and close. <laughs> really nice and close. Am I touching the ground? Oh, I am totally touching the ground. We're just, we're just rub. Well, anyway, we got a couple more over here. Let's observe these guys. <laughs> Maybe it's just not so close this time, all right? But I don't know if you guys knew this, but this isn't the only sea life in Scrap Mechanic. Because if I go behind me over here, you may notice that we also have underwater crabs. These are a special type of amphibious robot crab, actually, as you can see. And uh, they like to hang out in groups of two. They actually do pair for life. You can see right now they're doing their seasonal mating dance. It's where they go side to side next to each other and bob up and down with their claws in the air. And uh, you can see they're especially excited by the spinning of their drill bits underneath them. Yeah, right under here. Let's get nice and close. We're gonna observe here. It's nice and close, just like that. Look at that. Look at the drill bits going. That's how you know that they're uh, really excited for mating season. Oh boy. Oh boy. Things are happening. I don't know what's happening anymore. I can't. Hold on. <laughs> what? Oh no. <laughs> oh, this thing is so broken. <laughs> oh, what? No, don't do that. Don't do that. You can't. Wait. He's, he's taking it. Taking it like a champ. 
Okay. Well, these glow bugs are, couldn't handle my sub, but they can handle that guy no problem. Who am I to question the power of the glow bug? All right, let's go ahead and bring ourselves up a little bit. Let's get out of here and leave these guys to their natural tendencies. We don't want to violate the prime directive too much. We'll just let them naturally develop and naturally interact with each other. Don't need any intervention from us pesky humans. All right, and now let's head on back, surface ourselves after a very successful deep sea voyage. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, a pseudo sub, I guess you could call it. I mean, by the definition of the word submarine, it is underwater. It is an underwater vehicle that traverses the depths of the ocean. So I guess we at least have that going for us. However, uh, it is still tied to the surface, unfortunately, due to the limits of scrap mechanic. Hopefully at some point they plan to put some type of buoyancy control devices that we can use for underwater vehicles. That'd be really, really nice. But for now, this is what we get, okay? <laughs> All right, let me know if you guys have any other ideas of what like to see in Scrap Mechanic. If you want to see more awesome content on the channel, then go ahead and check out this on the end screen right here. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrap Man, and I'll see you next time. Bye.